My name is Joe Buskins. I am a second generation professional U.S. Coast Guard licensed boat builder and I also hold a 100 ton captain's license that I use during the summer months to operate our 29 foot custom built center console that we built here in our family's boat shop. So if you guys are new to the channel, welcome. And if you've been following the channel, welcome back. And you guys will notice that lately we've been doing a whole bunch of DIY type fiberglass do-it-yourself gel coat repairs and today we are talking about different fillers and putties now we haven't really touched on that very much but we've been getting a lot of questions about some of the different ways we've been doing things and I wanted to answer this as best I could so we are gonna jam pack this video full of information for you guys and again I do this professionally and grew up in a boat shop so this this is, uh, I'm sure there are other ways to do it, but I know these methods work. This is stuff we've been doing, so I'm not experimenting here today. This is proven methods and techniques that we use to get good quality boat builder grade results. So first off, there's a lot of questions about different kinds of putties and fillers. And generally speaking, one of your more entry level fillers would be a polyester based. So that'd be like a polyester resin based now we use a lot of the Napa brand. One of these is actually a, a fiber rated. It's got fibers added in there for strength. And the other is a lightweight filler. Now, sometimes we use these for radii like underneath uh, a stringer if you're tabbing something in or you're sticking something in lightly. It can be used as filler in some instances as far as a body filler but it's not gonna be as high a grade as say, for example, your vinyl esters. Um, when you move over here, you can see the 3M. This is their vinyl ester. This is their high strength. So once again, it's got milled fibers in there that are gonna give it a lot of strength, but it is a bear if you're trying to sand this stuff. It gets hard as a rock and very difficult to fare out. So what they offer is a premium filler that's a vinyl ester. Now, what is really cool about vinyl esters is these are approved for below the water line, which generally we don't put polyester fillers below the water line. They can have an issue with water absorption if they're just exposed to the elements. So you've got good, better, and then generally speaking, your epoxies are gonna bond and grip the most tenaciously. Um, you can make different consistencies. You can use a colloidal silica, which is a very lightweight material. And I'm gonna show you guys how to make a putty or a filler, sometimes they refer to it as a peanut butter. The pros and cons of these though, is that generally you can have some issues if you're trying to use gel coat over the top of epoxy. Now again, I know this is a hot debate and a lot of people say you can, some people say you can't. I've had some issues in the past and we may do some tests here in the near future to see if we can get gel coat to work properly. But gel coat is a styrene based material or styrene thinner is the styrene is the thinner for gel coat. Same as with the vinyl esters and with the polyesters. Now I want to show you guys as many tricks as we can today. And I know sometimes our videos run a little bit long, but there's not going to be a lot of uh, fluff in there. I'm going to try really, really hard to jam pack as much useful information as possible. Now, one thing I want to talk about is like with your fillers, if you're going to be using a polyester filler or any filler for that type, a lot of times there's going to be some settling. You may even see, for example, um, we've got a little bit of resin here and I'm going to do something that may surprise you, but basically any ortho or isophthalic resin, a good quality polyester resin, you can actually use that to thin and or bring back some of your polyester materials. Now, sometimes when you get polyester, you may see a clear liquid on top where there's some settling. That is just basically gonna be the polyester resin. Now, what I like to do is take a heavy stick and you need to go all the way to the bottom and pull the material back up to the top so you have a nice consistent color you want it nice and uniform you don't want any kind of um, ribbons of different kind of materials in there now let's see if i can get this lid off 
This one's gonna be a slightly different color. You can see this is the Pro Strand, which again, I've had very good success, but you can see here, there is some settling. And I didn't add any resin to that. That is just gonna be uh, resin floating to the top after the can has been sitting for a while. And again, you're gonna wanna turn this material over and stir it very thoroughly and go all the way to the bottom. Now, both of these are gonna use a little, something a little different than like in our, in our fiberglass demonstrations that you guys have seen. Matter of fact, this piece back here, if you're new to the channel, we have a very detailed video showing how to fiberglass over plywood, then install fittings through there, and then how to encapsulate it. Matter of fact, we're gonna be doing a little bit of fairing on this. I'm gonna actually be applying some fillers but um, you're gonna be using a paste type hardener. So unlike polyester resins that have a liquid hardener called MEKP, which stands for methyl ethyl ketone peroxide, it's in a liquid form. You're gonna be using a paste, almost like a toothpaste type material, if you will. And it is also very important prior to mixing any of this putty to thoroughly agitate or mix this tube from top to bottom you will have some settling in that as well and you don't want it to be settled because you'll have some liquid material come out and then some thickened putty come out uh, when you try to dispense it and that is not what you want so what we're going to do um, i've already actually sanded this piece of material for you guys and you can see we've kind of knocked some of the corners off as a matter of fact, you've guys seen me before, these little Velcro backed 3M pads and some 40 grit paper. Real good to kind of come in there and just scuff. We also knock some loose fibers around the edges of this piece of pipe. And if you guys haven't seen that little trick, what I do, I keep a little bucket full of older sanding discs. You can see these have been slightly used, but they make great discs for doing this kind of, just what I call rough sanding so i'm going to jump over here this is another important thing and of course if you guys have been doing auto body for years you probably know a lot of this stuff but i'm finding that a lot of you guys that are tuning in are new to using these kind of materials and so this is going to be kind of a i'm showing you how pros do it but i'm trying to break it down in consumable bites so that you guys can understand it and have some success with what you guys are doing now you may see a lot of folks or you may be tempted to use a piece of cardboard to put your putty or fillers on and i'm sure there have been plenty of people that do that but sometimes the cardboard is porous and it will soak up some of the resin out of the putty um generally we don't prefer that so i want to toss the cardboard well you say well man let me go find a nice piece of plywood but kind of the same deal. Uh, plywood can soak up some of the resin and uh, it can hold moisture and I don't really prefer it either. Although, if that's all you have, you know, I understand. But um, there are materials like polymer sheets and this is actually some old signboard material that I recycled. You might be able to even go to a sign shop and pick up some of this. You can cut it with a razor knife, score it, or even a bandsaw and you can make them custom sized. They were fantastic. So I would recommend using something like that. So now this material here, we have already sanded this. We've dried it off. Of course, you guys have seen me in the past use our little squirt bottle of acetone. Acetone is a really, really good cleaner to get the, the surface of the laminating resin that we use tacky again get it sticky so that material will adhere to it just going to use a wooden mixing stick and we're going to get just a modest size now again if you're new to this you probably don't want to start with too much material you may even want to practice a little bit but that's going to be a pretty typical there's my, my hand for reference so that's going to be a typical size what I would call a batch. Now, I'm gonna recommend you guys get a flexible spreader. Bondo brand, make some that are flesh colored. You got the yellow ones. 
I've got an assortment of sizes here. Sometimes we cut them down. Sometimes I'll even take some of them and put a radii or radius on the corner. Basically, we trimmed out a little bit with a sander, cleaned it up with some real fine sandpaper, and it can work really good for working materials into radiuses like around these pipes and whatnot. So today, let me see, let me check our temperature. We are holding at about 65, 66 degrees. Maybe some of you folks, I, I wanna say that's in the high teens as far as Celsius, mid to high teens as far as Celsius temperature. So fairly mild. Um, this putty though, the hotter it is, the faster it's gonna cure. So you'd wanna put less of the activator in it if the weather's hot. Now, generally speaking, if you have a, uh, a little serving size of putty about this size, I find about one line slightly off center is gonna be plenty. Matter of fact, that might even be a little on the, the hot side. Now, some fillers are gonna be different colors as a matter of fact, you can look over here at the 3M high strength and it is kind of yellow in color and then you got a greenish tint and then a grayish tint. But a lot of the fillers we use these days are gonna be, have blue catalyst. Don't be alarmed if something you buy has red catalyst. It's basically the same thing. So what I like to do, you got your one line over the top and I will usually kind of cut that material in scoop it up smear it across cut it in turn it smear it across cut it turn it the idea is that you do not want any ribbons of color you want it nice and uniform now this is another thing if you do some research online you're going to see people say don't don't stir it um is as long as you don't work air bubbles in um there's going to be more than one method i'm sure going to get a comment on this for sure but i have found that if you pick the material up spread it out cut it scoop it spread it out cut it that is usually going to give you a pretty good product now this material is pretty hot at this point you can see that's a nice uniform tone but it is quite it's quite hot it's quite dark so what we're going to do i'm actually going to apply a little bit of this material here on this kind of makeshift stringer section that we built and again if you guys are new to the channel and you haven't seen this video on how to fiberglass over plywood it might be very helpful and informative to you guys now oftentimes folks if you're new to doing this kind of work you may try to get a perfect coat on the first pass and that is hard to do a lot of times you're going to have to do multiple multiple coats and again, this is a demonstration piece and I'm trying to talk and work fast for you guys. But I find that oftentimes getting some material on there and doing more than one pass is probably going to be necessary. And I'm going to show you guys how we would clean this up. Now this is a complicated part as well. If you're just doing a flat panel, it's gonna be much easier. And I would probably recommend you guys starting on a flat panel if you don't have much experience. So generally just getting some material on there and just using a light touch. Now it's okay if it doesn't look perfect. Matter of fact, I'm not gonna to try to get this perfect because perfect is nearly impossible to attain. We're just gonna get some material on there and we're gonna let this cure for a bit and a little bit later in the video, I'm going to demonstrate how we're gonna fare that out. Now, this is a good time, like when you, have, when you have a gloved hand, it is okay to come back around and if you are gonna fare that fitting out, 
sometimes using a gloved hand is the way to go just like so again we're not shooting for perfection here on this first pass that is tricky at best And this, again, is a fairly complex piece if you are working on just a flat panel. A little bit easier to deal with. And this material we're using here, too, is more of a structural. This is a little bit stronger. It's not a lightweight material. So it's going to be a little trickier to sand for you guys. Okay. So we've just got a little skim coat on there and that's going to be enough for the moment. Now let me pivot this around and if our material will stay put, we've also got another sample piece that you guys have asked a lot about. Hopefully I can get it on here before this. This is a stringer mock-up piece oh, i'm sorry it's uh it's kusa material that looks like one of our rod holders actually and i'm going to try to get this on here before this material kicks off now on our custom 29 that we built we've got these kusa rod holders and again i have been getting a lot of questions from you guys on how we did it how that works how did we stick it to the hull and oftentimes we'll use fillers like this to get material tacked in place now this is just a mock-up this is a cutout of one of the uh, panels from our 29 and i've already fit this piece of kusa obviously we try to prep all this stuff beforehand for you guys so that the video can move right along now i'm going to come in here and you can see there's a little squeeze out Look at that just using my finger to tool that same deal on this side hopefully we can see what we're doing there and there's a little thin spot right there I'm gonna come back and touch this up now typically with the Kusa we would prime it just like we would marine plywood. And we will probably be doing a video on working with Coos in a little more detail. Although you can go back in the channel here and we've got well over 150 DIY type videos and well over 20 videos documenting the build of our 29 footer back here. Um, but we would typically resin coat the Coosa first. That's gonna help the material bond a little better, but maybe Maybe my cameraman can pan around here and just see how nice that tooled out for us. Kinda neat. Now, I am going to demonstrate what we would do if we were going to fix some holes as well. That seems to be a common thing with a lot of you guys. And we may have this batch kick off on us before I get a chance to do it. But generally speaking, if you have a hole like in our demonstration piece here where there was some silicone or some material, I will take a drill bit and I will wallow that out so that you got a good clean surface. And you guys bear with me, we're gonna use a little carbide burr and a vacuum to help hold some of the dust down a bit. There we go. So we've drilled out that hole. Now I'm going to take this little burr and wallow that out a bit.
you can see that really opened that up. Give it a little chamfer. Sometimes we'll even come out here and clean. cuts down on the dust. Take a little material off the parameter there. Now we've also got some small holes. Now a lot of you guys may be dealing with no, I'm jumping all over the place. I'm gonna change out that big half inch bit, go to a much smaller one. I know a lot of you guys and gals out there may have old screw holes where a fastener was previously, maybe a door, maybe a, a cabinet door in your little uh, narrow boat or canal cruiser. This one's for you there, David, on uh, cruising the cut. One of our buddies that's been following the channel has got a real nice channel overseas there in the UK. Um, what I would typically do is drill out a little bit of material there. Now it looks like you're just making things worse, but what we're trying to do is clean out any broken glass or any contaminated fibers in there. There could be silicone sealant or other things in there. Same deal, gonna drill that out just a bit. All right, and we're gonna hit it. Now if you've got a little burr like this. This is basically a Dremel tool would do the same thing. And I'm just gonna chamfer that hole out. Got that hole chamfered out just a bit. Very nice, just like so. Now, one thing to remember is sometimes when you're busy working, this material will kick off on you and keeping your board clean is gonna be good. Usually this stuff will flake right off of there on the edge of a hard surface. Sometimes the best thing to do is just let it dry and it will crack and break off of there. A lot of times that works really good. I'm actually just gonna leave that one. We'll come back to it. I got plenty of extras. That's a good thing to have. I am gonna hit, hit that board with a little bit of acetone. And I know we got a lot going on here, guys. <laughs> I'm trying to pack as much material in here now obviously you wouldn't be doing multiple fillers and explaining when you're in your shop doing this or on your boat but trying to give you guys a lot of valuable content here which now is also a good time to ask you guys if you are enjoying the content and finding value in what we're doing and want to see us do more of this kind of diy type stuff please hit that subscribe button like share comment all of that that really helps us to do more of it helps the algorithm it tells youtube that you guys like what we're doing and want to see us do a little more of it so what we're going to do a touch of acetone on the exterior surfaces and there are variables there are variables, guys. Obviously, you could wipe this down with acetone before you hit it with the grinder. Um, try to just show you guys workable options, though. Now, let's jump over 
just in case you guys maybe want to see some of the uh, the 3m the high strength filler from 3m it's got a little different consistency same deal though we want to mix it up just a bit it's good enough to fill a couple of those holes there now this stuff pretty pricey uh, you're looking at over 300 bucks a gallon so it is pretty steep versus the um, polyester body fillers they're gonna range around the hundred to hundred and twenty dollars a gallon now what's interesting is you can use the same same filler or same catalyst rather same deal though just remember to mix that thoroughly mix that thoroughly before ah, before applying it let's get another mixing blade there's another one you can see that's a custom one with a little bit of a radius on there we're just going to cut that catalyst in I also want to tell you guys how much I appreciate you taking the time I know there's a a lot of ways you could be spending your time and I know there are a lot of channels you could be watching and we try to bring real value to you guys and and I want you to know I genuinely appreciate you guys watching and I appreciate your comments most of them are very nice most of them <laughs> every now and again I get somebody that doesn't agree and that's okay if you guys want to add value to what we're doing or maybe you have a method that's worked really really good to you just communicate it to me or if you don't understand something we're doing i'll try my best to explain it to you guys as well so we've kind of cleaned that on either side of course you could hit this with some sandpaper around the perimeter as well and really scuff that up a little more if you wanted to Again, we're doing demonstrations here, guys. So it's kind of like we're trying to get the gist of this out there to you folks so that you can get kind of a general understanding. And I'm gonna wipe that in. And I'm putting pressure. And here in a moment, it is actually gonna come across. Maybe my cameraman can show that. <laughs> As I wipe it from one side, It'll actually push. And I prefer to push it, if you can, come in from one side there, work it all the way through several passes, and then we will come back around here and we will actually even work it back a bit the other way. You'll see it kind of bulge one way, then bulge the other way. Yep, you can see that pushing out a bit. And we'll work it back and forth. So obviously, we can't put pressure in the middle of that hole, but as the material works back and forth, we want to get a quality bond there. And it's okay if that is underfilled just a touch. If you were gonna try to put, say for example, gel coat over that, this, this is very tough stuff to sand, and it's obviously not the same color as what gel coat would be. So you want it slightly recessed so that when you do sand it a bit and come back with a color match gel coat, you would not see the hole that was filled. Same goes for these little holes here on the top. Now we actually may mix another type of filler. I want to try to show you guys a little bit of everything. We're actually going to take some resin, just some good old polyester resin, and we're going to be adding some of the uh, different West systems. Like you can add the microfibers and or the colloidal silica to get 
again like a peanut butter polyester resin based consistency or putty you can also use that with gel coat so i know i am really i am really throwing a lot of information at you guys oh stuck my finger in it that's gonna happen if you happen to touch something with your finger good thing to have gloves on and it's not a big de deal to come back and wipe it a little bit now this material here has already firmed up and the thing we've got like right now for example we've got some vinyl ester that's the cool thing about vinyl ester and polyester is they are quite compatible i can come right over if i wanted to Remember, we're not trying to get it perfect on the first pass. Hard to do. And this material is really not a fairing filler anyway. And as a matter of fact, I'll probably be able to show you here in a bit the difference. When it cures, it cures hard as a rock. And it's not something that you're going to want. You're not going to want to have to do a lot of fairing and shaping with the 3M vinyl ester. Make multiple small passes with that. It's okay to use gloved hand to come in there and tool that. Sometimes that is the best way, especially, again, you got a tricky you got a tricky surface like this one. A lot of angles here. If you're new to this kind of work, something like this stringer would probably not be something you'd want to attempt <laughs> on your very first try. It's a little, it's a little tricky. So we're gonna catch this batch of material a little faster and get it cleaned up this stuff has not cured and you can see obviously we can we can get it off of our uh, our mixing blade always be sure to keep plenty of good shop towels handy folks you guys have seen me use the little squeeze bottle acetone trick and while this putty is curing you can use an acetone soaked rag to clean some of the residue off of areas you may not want it say for example if you get a little too much out here on the side see there we can use a little cloth to kind of clean up some of the excess if you want. Now I know guys, I am fire hosing this stuff at you. This is a lot of information and I'm trying to really add value for you guys. Now this time again, you can see we caught this soon enough and we're able to get most of that residue off of our mixing board that's very important otherwise you're going to end up with really built up mixing board and you're either going to have to toss it or just stop work altogether and clean it up all right leaky air hose man all right so you guys remember we put this on uh, just a few minutes ago and this is all real time i'm trying to really really hustle along here but you guys can see very little editing and that material has already started to kick off and you can see how beautifully it has stuck that kusa board to what i would consider like a representation of the hull of a boat um this could even be plywood for example you could do plywood to plywood you could use an epoxy filler or some other type filler to, um, to do that if you want, which 
brings me around to, I'll see, <laughs> I'm running out of room. So we've got our resin. I'm actually just gonna set this one off to the side for right now, I do believe. There we go. I think that that has demonstrated adequately for you guys. So what we have here are some microfibers. Now this is made by West Systems and there are other companies and brands that make this kind of stuff. Now, generally what I would recommend guys is when you're mixing this stuff, you need to be wearing a mask obviously, you need to be wearing some PPE, some eye protection. And a lot of this material like the fillet blend and or the colloidal silica, this is very, very fine material. You do not want to inhale it. Um, one trick that I use a lot of the times is I run the vacuum with the hose right next to where we're mixing this stuff and it will pick up a, it'll draw air down into the vacuum. So you do not have to worry about inhaling any of that. But I'm gonna do this very, very slowly, very, very cautiously. And this stuff is incredibly lightweight. I'm gonna add a couple, three, four, five scoops of that keeping scoops and again we're running just pure resin in there and then I'm gonna go four or five scoops of the milled fibers maybe three or four it kind of just depends there isn't one particular ratio or number that is the catch-all, do-all, fix-all. Um, now what I like to do, guys, is kind of chop this stuff. Hope you guys can see that. I'm not mixing this aggressively. I'm not getting crazy. I'm just kind of chopping it in, turning it. You can see that is getting much much thicker already the colloidal silica really thickens it up the microfibers add some strength i'm going to go two or three more and this is a really good way to make your own fillers now you can also do this with epoxy resin. Y'all will notice that we're using the West Systems, but a lot of these additives will work with a polyester resin as well. You notice I'm just doing this nice and easy. I'm not getting, you can see that's thickened up considerably. And remember, you can do this with gel coat as well and so a lot of times if you've got a deeper gouge or again going back to screw holes that need to be filled if you have a factory match gel coat you can add some of the colloidal silica or fume silica microspheres um, there's a variety of different names they use and it will give you it allow you to take a, a resin and thicken it up a pretty good bit while that's sitting though, I want to show you guys another little trick when it comes to getting a lot of work done and doing it professionally. And again, this is what we do for a living. So time, time is money and you want to try to make things as easy as possible. If you catch this filler as early as possible, so this filler is only say 10, 15 minutes old and you can come back on it and you can make a lot of headway. This is starting to tack off. It's not quite there yet. Now again, I'm gonna show you guys the little trick for catching this dust. Try to get you guys the best angle as far as lighting is concerned 
All right, here we go. If you catch this material fast enough, it sands much, much easier. Now I'm just doing a rough pass. Many times what we'll do is we will make one pass, get some material on there, and then come in and just knock the ridges off of it. Really knock the big, high, rough stuff off. We're not trying to get it perfect, but a lot of times you're gonna have to come in with a second. You can see how this paper will fold and give you that beautiful contour like around that little rigging pipe. If you let this material dry for a long period of time, it is going to be a bear of sand. Now obviously you could use power tools as well. Yes, just that little bit. You can see we're already making good progress fairing that out. Now again, y'all, this is demonstration, demonstration purposes. And I know I am fire hosing this stuff, man. And you guys, um, some of you guys out there do this for a living. And you guys, if you do it for a living, I'm sure you got your own methodology. But uh, just trying to give you guys a really wide and broad overview so we do have these little screw holes here that are still giving us an issue you're like well man what are we going to do with those guys i'm going to add a little more of this colloidal silica and again you're just going to chop it in chop it in nice and easy this could be the same Thing you do with gel coat although with gel coat you may or may not add the the fibers but I want to show you folks what you can do if you got some gel coat damage or some little screw holes and again there's more than one way you can do this drilling it out chamfering it a bit with like a Dremel a Dremel tool you can do it just old school with just a piece of hand sandpaper. All right. And we're going to let this stand for just a minute. Sometimes you'll see little air bubbles in there. And if you just give it a while, it'll all blend to a nice homogenous mixture. Right, I'm gonna turn the vacuum on one more time. Again, safety is important, guys. Always wanna be wearing a mask. I know I get comments all the time. We wear a mask when we're doing this professionally day to day, but here for these demonstrations, just so much easier for me to communicate with you guys but the channel is really growing and it's because of y'all so thank you so so much all right here we go here we go again now here's an example of where I've taken one of the bondo blades and I've just taken a razor knife I don't have one here on this table but you can take these larger blades and you can cut them very carefully to width sometimes when you just have a small 
very small area like this that is needs to be filled you don't need a big giant wide blade matter of fact the same could go for like when you're trying to say spread some putty in a narrow area the big wide ones are great for big wide open spaces but um not so much for the little narrow spaces so it is okay quite okay to cut them down to size so imagine same deal though this could be epoxy resin or it could be gel coat in this case we're just using polyester resin and if you guys want to learn more about resins in general too we've got another video we've done recently where we tested uh, some polyester resin against epoxy resin and actually wanted to see if it would smoke or catch on fire or overheat and we recently did a pretty cool video where we tested some marine plywood and some of the kusa board i uh, think it's the same as like in overseas the thermolite is very very similar uh, tested some of these materials to failure and they're just a couple videos back here on our youtube channel but what we have here guys is we've got some mekp this would be your hardener or the catalyst mekp 925 and it generally comes clear a lot of times what we will do is we will add a little bit of red dye to that and it does help us to see when it has been completely activated um, that is one of the things we've done and we're just going a couple drops come on baby there you go that is now that is going to be way <laughs> way plenty but again this is for demonstration purposes usually if you're mixing you can see how the red really helps you tell when the material has been thoroughly mixed polyester resin is different than epoxy polyester you can add anywhere from about one to two percent and that translates to about 10 to 12 cc's per quart is a pretty good rule of thumb or about 10 or 12 drops per ounce is a real good just a, a general rule of thumb now when you're using epoxy resins it's usually in a ratio of like two to one one to one three to one and those ratios have to be exact and to either speed up the cure or slow down the cure you typically use different activators you typically have a slow a medium and a fast activator and if the temperatures are cold or colder you would go with a faster activator if the temperatures are really high like in the summertime you would go with a slower activator so that you didn't get a runaway a runaway cure now the same deal with this i usually will pick it up turn it kind of chop my way through it i said i was going to make a short video tonight guys but i don't know how far we are into it looks like it's going to be a pretty long one but hopefully there's a lot of good info in here for you folks so we've got these holes cleaned out they've been drilled out they've been sanded they've been wiped down a lot of times what i will do is try to get the resin to run in kind of from one I don't know if you guys can see that we're running in from one side and it will fill oh that was pretty do you guys see that i'm going to give that a second if you try to just put a big dollop right over the top a lot of times an air bubble will be formed down in the hole itself whereas if you kind of come in from the side i'll see if i can do that once again you kind of coax You see we're doing kind of a little tapping motion same deal once it gets in there a lot of times we'll come back and we'll you notice that's a nice pure 
fairly bubble free. We'll give that a few moments to kind of settle in. But you can see how this small blade that out. If you come from this angle here, you can actually see the, the sheen on that. We've got a really pretty nice feel. Now, something important to remember, there's never a point where you don't put an activator. Like, I can save this. It's unactivated. There's no catalyst in it. So, I can cover this and use it for another little project. It'll be totally fine. You can even use this sometimes as a a, a fairing material, if you will. Like, if you got some fibers that are exposed in a rough compartment, say you got an unfinished fiberglass compartment, sometimes you can brush some slightly thickened resin over everything and it'll give you better cosmetics. It'll smooth out a lot of the stuff. But you guys can see how this smaller blade, a lot of times we'll give it a moment, give it a moment to settle in. And you can imagine if this were, if this were slightly thickened gel coat, you could let that tack off or cure and you could come back with a unthickened gel coat, usually just in pure form and one or two wipes over the surface. Um, gel coat, that's a whole nother thing. I've got some gel coat videos and we plan on doing a whole bunch of videos pertaining to I think overseas in the UK and Australia, they call it flow coat. Basically, we call everything gel coat, and then we just add wax at the end there. But um, that's a lot of information. We've filled multiple kind of surfaces here. We've got like a big bolt hole that might be like in your transom. We've got some fairing and filling. Matter of fact, you can see that vinyl ester has already kicked off, and it has dried no problem going right over the polyester these two are completely compatible although the 3m high strength it's awesome stuff for repair material but you do not want to have to do a bunch of fairing and sanding with it um yeah so i hope i covered it i hope i covered everything you guys mean the world to me we want to do a whole bunch more of this stuff obviously I'm a full-time fishing captain. We build and repair boats. The YouTube thing is something we're doing more and more of. And as you guys support the channel and grow, channel grows, we can do more of it. So it's Captain Joe here with Island Marine Charters down in Gulf Shores, Alabama. Fish Bump TV here on YouTube. As always, my fantastic cameraman, Logan, there behind the camera. And we appreciate you guys so much. And as always, we will catch you guys next time out.